Mr. McBrien, this is TEJ3M, Introduction to Computer Engineering. Please pause the movie and think about what computer engineering means to you and why you find it interesting. Come back when you're done. Okay, welcome back. I'll give you my perspective then on why computer engineering is interesting. And the answer starts in 1947 and finishes, well, now. So in 1947 the transistor was invented. John Bardeen, Walter Bertain, William Shockley observed what they called the transistor effect. When electrical contacts were applied to a crystal of germanium the output power was larger than the input. And this might seem like a strange statement but what it meant was that this item could work as a solid state switch and a solid state amplifier. And we'll talk much more when we unpack the transistor later in this course. Now, that would have been interesting except for the fact that their transistor was just one switch, one amplifier. And it wasn't particularly small or compact. The only thing that was great about it was that it was efficient and solid state. But in the mid-1960s, after the transistor had been used in applications for about 20 years, a gentleman named Moore made an observation. His observation is called Moore's Law, but it was really just that, an observation. Maybe you know what it is? Here's essentially what it boils down to. Every two years, the number of transistors on a computer chip doubles. So this implies that a computer can double in speed every two years. Or it implies that a computer with the same performance gets to be half the size in two years. Or, for that matter, half the cost. But the implication of Moore's Law is that computers get more powerful, smaller, and cheaper. And this may not seem exciting over two years, but when that idea keeps getting applied over and over again, then we see a remarkable transformation in our technology. So it's worth noting that Moore's Law is not the only thing that pushes computers forward. Other innovations can help as well, and this will be a large part of our hardware unit in computer engineering class. Let's try a little illustration, though, of Moore's Law and what can happen. Now, first, you have to consider the first computer I had way back when that I spent literally my life savings on, and I bought a, uh, a computer that had a 35 megabyte hard drive. And it was 35 megabytes because I paid the extra $450 to upgrade from the 25 megabyte hard drive. Now, what's in front of us here is, of course, a USB flash drive, a half terabyte drive, 512 gigabytes. If we do some quick math, this drive is more than 10,000 times the capacity of that hard drive that I purchased. But you can buy it for a few dollars on Amazon and have it shipped to you the next day. You can carry it around in your pocket. It weighs approximately one one hundredth of what that hard drive did and adjusted for inflation less than one one hundredth the cost as well. Now this isn't about transistors in this case, this is about storage space, but this illustrates the kind of things that can happen over decades as that phenomenon continues. Now, 
when we can miniaturize to this level, when we can drop costs in this manner, revolutionary things can happen. So you might think of some examples. The most obvious one is the massively powerful computer that you carry around in your pocket. Your phone is the logical extension of this and many people would have thought it inconceivable 40 years ago that this could happen. But there are more um, there are more things than just the capacity to ask Siri what the cube root of pi is. Uh, there are revolutionary things that can occur once we can have huge amounts of processing power in a small space with portability, etc. So I'm going to illustrate some of these now. And these are not particularly these are not outliers. These are simply uh, extensions of the technology that would have been the realm of science fiction not too long ago. And now are just a conversation topic. Okay, so let's go through a few. In 2007, the Stuxnet worm began its attack on Iran's uranium enrichment facility preventing them from being able to get nuclear weapons. Um, Stuxnet was simply a small worm that had been designed to infect computers all around the world, but it was smart enough to only target specific programmable logic controllers associated with enrichment of fissionable material associated with the Iranian nuclear program. It's worth noting that this worm, um, if it had been a decade earlier, there probably would have been uh, bombers attacking those facilities with concurrent loss of life and, of course, uh, considerable destruction to the environment, um, to the buildings. Instead, we have a carefully targeted uh, um, algorithm that replaces what amounts to an act of war. Okay, let's move forward five years. On August 6, 2012, Curiosity landed on Mars. It's been almost eight years since that happened as of time of cutting this video. And Curiosity's been exploring the surface of Mars for the first time. And doing this even though the operators of this device are out of communication more than 90% of the time and when they are in communication the speed of light implies that their commands to the rover are delayed by minutes or even hours. Four years after that, Ontario approved automated vehicles testing on, on their roads. The implications of this are interesting. The car that passes you on the highway just might have no one operating it other than an algorithm. Okay, so these are revolutionary ideas that were the realm of science fiction only decades ago. And they were made possible by the transistor, by Moore's Law, and by creative minds. There are more revolutions to be had, more amazing applications coming every day. And this is why engineers with training and skills around computers are in very high demand. The field is changing. New ideas require creative solutions. So we might ask ourselves, well, okay, how do we make devices make smart decisions like that? And it is one of the most interesting challenges for computer engineers. The reason why is because it's the combination of so many things that go into that idea. And that's what computer engineering is about. So we have to integrate the idea of devices and programming. So electrical engineering and computer science. And 
we can break these things up and talk about robotics, talk about automation and decision systems, two things that go together very well, sensors, device design, and computer design, as well as maintenance. All of these things are computer engineering. The skills that we need, well, they are as varied as the as the things that go into computer engineering. First and foremost, we need to be able to analyze a problem, decide we want to solve a problem, analyze it, and try to design a system to address it. We have to be able to, to use troubleshooting and logic to figure out what's going on when our system doesn't solve the problem. We have to be able to construct circuits and analyze circuits for the devices we design. We have to be able to program them to make smart decisions. We have to be able to take the data that is produced either by our device or in researching our device and design ways to make decisions about that. So taking large amounts of data from sensors and turning those into a decision-making process is a big part of computer engineering. Because the problems here are so big, we have to think in terms of managing resources to get our projects done on time and to specifications, and this involves project management. It also involves documentation. We have to document before, during, and after our implementations. And we have to have tremendous skills in mathematics to be able to design our algorithms and design our devices. It's a big skill set and this is part of why not everybody can be a computer engineer. Now we're going to work on developing all of those facets of ourselves and you may see some that you enjoy and some that you don't. The good news is you don't have to be an expert at all of them. But first and foremost, my goal in working us through the TJ3M curriculum is to have us attack the notion of a device that just does something. We've all done this. We've all looked at a remote control for a television or um, looked at a shifting system, gear shifting system for a car and not worried about it. Said, ah, it just does it. Don't worry about it. Well, my objective in this course is going to encourage you to reject this idea of the black box and instead say, I want to know how this does this. I want to know how it works. And when you start asking yourself those questions, hmm, how did they do this thing? Then you can start to say, how would I design it? And how will I design the next cool device that people will take for granted? So our foci in TJ3M, we're going to talk a little bit about careers in computer engineering. We're going to unpack circuits, make sure that we can um, design and implement them. We will do some documentation. We're going to look at computer hardware in depth, look at programming and automation. How will you receive your mark in this course? We'll do some unit tests around the concepts that we, that we discuss quizzes of course we're going to focus a lot of our energy on hands-on projects building things we'll have a careers project and we'll spend approximately the last month of the course on the summative project and finally we'll have our final exam as far as submissions go Wherever possible, assignments will be submitted in electronic form to the drop boxes on Google Classroom and or Brightspace. No submissions will be in email or hard copy form, and Google Drive shares have to be from the link on Classroom so that they can be properly graded and tracked. 
Okay, so that was a lot of information in a short period of time. The key ideas that we've talked about, computer engineering more than anything else, is about making devices smart. Because of the trend towards robotics and automation, computer engineers are in considerable demand these days. There are lots of good paying jobs for people who can do the job. It's worth noting that widgets today, hardware rarely occurs without considering software at the same time. So in TGA 3M, we're going to focus on design of various solutions on the electrical engineering aspects and on the programming side. For your activity, please view the TED Talk on the astounding athletics of quadcopters. Work in pairs if desi desired. And consider the ways that athletic ability was implemented with control of quadcopters. What inputs were used to sense the environment? How many physical models were used to customize the behavior of quadcopters for specific purposes? And how was machine learning used? For your homework then, please finish your documentation. Bring your notes for the discussion tomorrow. Be sure and sign up for Google Classroom with the code you've been given. And fill out your contact information. Get your consent form signed uh, to return to me tomorrow, wherever possible. Thanks very much, and have a great night.